We are smushing together today part of lesson 11-2, okay? The part that's on the quiz and on the final. Um, drawing probability distributions, I did not put on the quiz or the final, so we're gonna skip that part of the lesson. But in place of that, there are some super easy questions on the quiz, like find the mean, median, mode, and standard deviation. All of those can be done by just typing things in your calculator, okay? So I wanna go over how you type those in your calculator today in place of doing drawing probability distributions. So you can either write yourself a few little notes on side 8A, or you might need a sheet of notebook paper if you're not in stats. If you're in stats, the first part of the lesson is gonna put you to sleep, okay? Then I'll try to scream real loud and wake you up because we're doing two important things later, reviewing probability distribution, uh, probability, let me try that again. We're reviewing binomial probabilities, but we are also, okay, doing expected value, which is on the final and on the quiz, finding expected value. All right, so here we go. Um, our textbook has in lesson 08, way back in the like prerequisite knowledge, they talk about uh, using mean and median to find the center of data or using a standard deviation or a five number summary to find the spread of data. What you have to know for the quiz is simply how to find mean, median, mode, and standard deviation on your calculator. We're gonna spend a lot more time on standard deviation on Monday, because you most are gonna be here Monday, right? We're gonna tape the lesson. And then Tuesday, you guys get to have a work day. The other classes are gonna be the other way around. They're gonna watch the video we tape on Tuesday because they're gonna be a bunch of people gone for AP. All right. Um, the definition of mean and median in mode, do we need to know these? Do we already know these? The mean is you add them all up and divide by how many there are. We call that the average starting in elementary school, right? The median, you put them in order and you pick out the middle number. What if there's six of them? You average the middle two. Everybody okay? In the end, the median should be a single number where half the values fall below and half the values fall above. All right, the mode is the number that appears most often. There can be no mode if the list of numbers is one, two, three, four. There's no mode. If the list of numbers is one, one, two, two, three, four, then there's two modes. Both one and two occur the same number of times. But if the list was one, one, two, two, three, 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 four, five, then three is the only mode because it occurred three times and one and two only occurred twice each. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, here's an example real quick. They added these numbers up. Then they divided by the fact that there was 12 entries and got 9.08. They put them in order. There were 12 entries, so they had to add the five, fifth and sixth term. Uh, just kidding, they add the sixth and seventh term, right? Yes, the sixth and seventh term and add together divided by two. And the mode, um, four was the only thing repeated in this list, so the mode was four. All right, your calculator can do all of that except find the mode for you. It can put the numbers in order for you, but it can't tell you the mode, uh, I don't think, anywhere. But All right, the definitions we went through. Let's, let's, let's do this as our example today. I have a couple examples, but let's just do this one. Whoa, what just happened? I didn't know I could do that. It is. I, apparently, I can just grab this screen. And that was just so exciting. Yes, I did. Okay. The problem is, what I wanted to do was have you enter this list in your calculator. How do we do that, guys? Turn it on. Then we just go stat and enter. We go to list one and we're going to put these numbers in, okay? Up arrow, clear, enter, we'll get rid of the old list if you want. 
Okay, my calculator is now looking for list item number item number 10, so therefore there must be nine on the list. Double check. Nine numbers, right? Everybody's good? All right, then what you're going to do is you're going to go back to that stat button, and you're going to right arrow over to the calc menu, and you're going to choose the one variable stats. Stats, right arrow, right up here, one variable stats, number one. Now, if you have the newer calculator, it's going to ask you some questions. The old one, you can just hit enter. All right, the new one, you just want to make sure there's no frequency list here because these numbers weren't repeated in a frequency list. We just want to use list one. Then we're going to hit calculate. Um, if you had, like, um, sorry, waiting for it to get warmed up here. If you had a list, like your values were two, three, four, and five, because there's a five question quiz and everybody got it two through five. And over here you had 10 people got this score, five people got this score, two people got this score, and one person got that score. You can find the mean, median, and mode of their scores. You wouldn't have to type two in 10 times. You could put this in list two and tell it that's the frequency that those occurred at. So it, it is handy. I'm not going to make you do one like that. Okay. Good question. All right. What we need to know off this screen is we need to know this stands for mean. So 43.9 I got is the mean. Everybody okay? Did everybody get this? And everybody understands that. That's the what you're going to use for mean. I hope you had to do that before in some class at some point. The second thing is, is the sum of all the values. That was 395. And then the sum of each value squared and added together is 26,777. Okay. Um, the sum, obviously you could want to know the sum of all of the numbers, but... The sum squared is used in finding the standard deviation, but they already found the standard deviation for us. All right, guys, S of X is the sample standard deviation. And that's not the one I'm going to ask for on the quiz, but I am going to give you the ultimate hint. It actually shows this little symbol on the quiz to tell you that's the one you're looking for, okay? So this is the population standard deviation. And I'm going to give you definitions for those in case you care in just a minute. But all you're going to be required to do on the quiz is find them off this screen right here. Any questions? So the one you would have to write is 32.4. Right. If you see this little arrow here that's telling us we should scroll down some more to find some other things. This is actually called the five number summary. The min is simply the minimum value. Q1 is the 25th percentile. Median, we do need to know. So we're going to write that one down. Q3 is the 75th percentile, and the maximum was 100. So if we wanted to know the range, we could do max minus min using the numbers on this screen. That would is one of the ways you can determine spread. These numbers are pretty spread out from max to min, right? But when you looked at the list, really 100 is pretty far out there. So, all right. Um, what did we not find that I suggested we needed to be able to find? Range we could do 100 minus 11. The mode, okay? The only thing the calculator will help you do is it'll put them in order. If you go back to stat and you choose number two and then you type second one and hit enter, all it says is done. Was not helpful at all. Except if you go back to stat, 
now list one should be in order. So you could scroll down and see that 16 repeated. Is that the only one that repeated? So the mode is 16. So again, it was stat. We, choose, we chose sort ascending or descending. It wouldn't matter. And then we typed the name list one there. You don't have to do that. The list on the quiz is short enough that you will be able to just eyeball it and figure out if there's a mode, okay? It's not like 17 items long. It's like five or six. So mode shouldn't be a question. All right. Measures of spread or variation describe the distribution of the data. We're going to spend a bunch of time next week talking about normal distribution, okay? We'll talk more about standard deviation, variance, and spread. For today, I want you to just understand the definition of standard deviation. It's complicated, and you're never going to have to do it, but let me show you what how they calculate it. All right? It, this is the symbol. It's a lower case sigma from the Greek alphabet. The definition of standard deviation is the square root of the variance. To find the variance, you find the mean, and then you find out how far away each one of those values is from the mean, okay? Now, because some are above the mean and some are below the mean, they would be positive and negative. Does that make sense? But if I add a bunch of positive and negative numbers together, I'm quite likely to get close to zero, okay? So what we have to do is we have to square them before we add them together so that they're all positive. And then we add them together and we divide by the number and then we square root to get back to what we had. It's a hot mess. Here's an example, here's the formula, okay? It says you subtract each item from the mean and you square it, then you add them all together. Then you divide by how many items and then you square root. If it's a sample standard deviation, they divided by a slightly smaller number, n minus one. The mean, uh, that's a good question. They use a different letter when they're talking about a sample mean and a population mean. The calculator doesn't use a different letter, though. All right, we are going to stick with the population, and I'm going to show you a really quick example here. These are a bunch of quiz scores, okay? <clears throat> so they calculated the mean, and it was about 7.4. So then they would take this score, 7, and subtract 7.4. And they would take 8 and subtract 7.4. And they would take 9 and subtract 7.4. But because those are some going to be positive and some going to be negative, they would square them all and then keep going until they'd done all of them. Then they would divide by how many quizzes they gave, which looks like, what, 25? And then they would square root to get rid of the fact that we squared them. So we squared them and averaged them, and then we unsquared them. That's how you find standard deviation. All right. Do you need to know that? No. You get to type it in your calculator and use the little buttons, okay? And there's like one question that says just find the standard deviation. All right. It has to do with the spread. So this quiz scores had a mean of 7.4 and a standard deviation of 2.1. If it's normally distributed, which we're going to talk about next week, everything, most of the scores fell within two standard deviations. Okay. Now, if you add these together, you get 9.5, which is really, so most of the scores fell within one above because the highest score on the quiz was a 10. Now, there was a, somebody who got a 2. So they would be way down here, more than two standard deviations below. They were like way out of whack with everybody else. All right, a five number summary can be used to draw. Remember what this thing's called from other classes, I hope? Have you seen that before, box and whisker plot? No? Okay. All right, You all you do is you put the median, Q1, the min, Q3, and the max, and you line them up proportionally against a number line of some kind, okay? So that 
you can tell by looking at it, this half of the box is bigger. That means this 50, this 25%, sorry, each of these is 25% of the data. This 25% was more spread out. That's what that means. There, it varied more in this 25%, okay? We're not gonna do box and whisker. I took it off the quiz. We just don't have time to do all this stuff. Do we need to practice mean, median, mode, and standard deviation one more time? Okay. One more time. Do this, do this top list right here as quick as you can because I want to move on. Type them into list one. If you don't remember where something is, ask because this is the last chance to go over that. Stat, enter. I got 10 items. Did someone else get that there's 10? So when I go to that screen, I have the mean is 28. The standard deviation is 5.1. Number of items is 10. The median is 28.5. Twenty four, twenty eight, twenty one, thirty seven, thirty one, twenty nine, twenty three, twenty two, thirty four, thirty one. There is a repeat of thirty one, right? Any question? Everybody gonna be okay with those two questions on the quiz? I actually made them two points apiece because I thought that was a nice way to pad your grade a little. Okay, just gotta be able to find them. All right, I'm gonna go really fast through an idea called discrete or continuous. They call it a random variable. I'm just going to use the word data because random variable just sounds confusing and it's not on the quiz. Discrete data is generally like whole numbers. If you have a list of things you're talking about, finding the mean, median, or mode, it matters sometimes whether they're rounded whole numbers or they can be decimals and fractions and infinitely small. If you're gonna measure the temperature, you could do 98.65321, right? If you're gonna measure the weight of something, the height, the length, a distance of any kind, you can measure those in really small increments. If you're gonna tell me how many ice cream cones you sold or how many cars in the parking lot or how many desks in this room, you're gonna answer in whole numbers, yes? Okay, so discrete is when you can only talk about basically whole units. That's not the whole definition, but we're going to just go with it. Continuous is when you can have things in between. So here are a couple examples. Weight of a box of cereal, what do you think? Discrete, every box is exactly the same, or could you measure them in grams and they might be off a little bit, or hundreds of a gram? Yeah. It is continuous, okay? Number of cars in the parking lot. That's a whole number, yes? It's going to be discrete. Uh, time it takes to get your food at a fast food restaurant. Anybody work at McDonald's? They have a little second clock, right? It's like broken down into time that's pretty small. This is uh, continuous. Uh, attendance at the board meeting. People are going to be whole numbers, discrete. Yeah, we're going to go with that. Okay. Time it takes to randomly, to get the temperature up to between 60 and 68 in the classroom. It's time, so it's continuous. The number of photos the photographer took at your wedding, discrete. I think I took the discrete continuous question off the quiz, but if it's on there, it's an easy one. So there are some that can be uh, argued about. You can argue about um, like the heights of basketball players, normally heights you would say are continuous, but if you've rounded everybody to the nearest inch or half inch, then you could say it's discrete. I didn't put anything confusing like that on there. I know that. Okay. We talked about binomial yesterday, but we talked about binomial probability, and that's where we're going with this. A binomial experiment is anything where you either succeed or fail 
okay? There is a fixed number of trials N. There is success or failure. The probability of success is the same for every trial. And the probability of failure is one minus that. There can't be anything but success or fail. We're gonna go through some examples here in a minute. And if I took a survey out in the hall and I asked, uh, do you like this school lunch? If I got yes, no, sometimes, that's not a binomial experiment, okay? If I asked, do you like first or second hour better, then you have to pick one and it's either the probability of choosing this one or this one. There's only two choices. Do you see what I'm talking about, guys? Okay, a multiple choice quiz actually is considered binomial because you either get it right or wrong. Does that make sense? Okay, so we're gonna run really fast through um, actually, I want you to write down the definition. We used this yesterday. It's binome PDF. Does anybody remember how you get there? It's second and then the VARS key. Okay. And then it's down to choice A and it says binome PDF. Okay. It the first number is the number of trials. If you have an older calculator, it doesn't prompt you, so you have to know this. That's why I'm suggesting you write it in your notes. The number of trials we're gonna do. The second number is the probability of success. So if we have a five a quiz question with five choices, the chance you successfully guess is one fifth. All right, and then this is, we're looking for the probability of having how many successes. So if it's a 10 question quiz, what's the chance I get exactly four right? I would put four at the back. How many successes are we trying to get? Your calculator calls that X, they call this, I think P, and they call this N. All right, I have a couple questions that just ask, is this a binomial experiment real fast? Um, if you go out in the hall and you ask people, do you own an MP3 player? They're either going to answer yes or no. Okay. So it's a binomial experiment. Five cards are drawn from a deck. The random probability represents a number of spades. When they hand you a card, it's either going to be a spade or it's not going to be a spade. Yes. So you have a one in four chance of spades, three, four, not spades. So that is considered a binomial experiment. This one is not because it says 61% like the school uniforms, 24 do not. Why is that not considered binomial? It doesn't add up to everybody, okay? So some people apparently said, well, a little wishy-washy, whatever, okay? If it doesn't add up to 100%, it's not a binomial experiment. All right, I'm gonna move on to our question here. This says a survey found 20% of Americans have visited a doctor in the last six months. We are going to randomly pull five people and ask if they went to the doctor. We want to, in the last six months. We want to know the probability that out of our five people asked that at least four will say yes, they went to the doctor in the last six months. Seem like it to be high or low. If only 20% went to the doctor, what's the chance that at least four of the people we ask are just going to say yes? Doesn't seem very big, right? Okay, just so we're thinking ahead here. What we're gonna do is find the probability that exactly four people say yes. Would be out of five people asked, what's the chance that they went to the doctor? 20%. And we wanna know the chance that four of them say yes. What is that answer? Oh, oh, six, four. Okay, but it said up here at least four. So we win if we get four who say yes, but we also win if we get five out of five who say yes. So we're gonna find that probably. Guys, this is my hint for the day. Do second enter and just change it to five out of, so it would be 5.2 and five. Now, this is really little. 
five out of five is what? Uh, 3.2 times 10 to the negative fourth, right? Did I get it right? It's point zero zero. So if I add those together, uh, I don't think so, because it's from here, right? Isn't it negative four? It's okay. Um, so if I add those together, that'll get the probability of at least four, would be three, or at least four would mean four or five people. If I add those, I get zero, zero, six, does the next one line up? Seven, two. So they rounded and got a slightly different answer than we did, but this is not a percent. If we wanted to move it over twice, we'd have 0.67% of the time. Okay, so 0.67 is the probability that we ask five people and four or five of them say they went to the doctor. Really small percent. Okay, we're going to do this question. So the survey found that 60% of the victims of healthcare fraud were senior citizens. We are going to randomly pull six, pull out of a hat or whatever, six victims of healthcare fraud, and we're going to decide what is the probability that at least three of them will be senior citizens. So we have the probability that what's going to happen? We're pulling out of a sample of six, so we're gonna pull six names. The chance we get a senior citizen is 0.6, but what does this at least three mean? Three or above, so we gotta do three and four and five. There's another way to do this on the calculator, but for the one question you're gonna have on the quiz, I don't wanna confuse you by teaching you another way. What? Oh, yes. At least three. Okay, so three, four, five, or six. We've got to add all those up. Okay, I thought I had one. Yeah. Bars. Oh, my goodness. First one point two seven six something. Okay, you guys start adding them all up. Yeah, I think you're right. Like I said, there's an easier way to do this, but it's you have to really understand it and the one quiz question, it's not worth me teaching you another way. So you add them all up. Eighty-two percent of the time, when we pick out of the sixty percent of healthcare victims being seniors, when we pick six names, there's an eighty-two percent chance that at least three of them will be senior citizens. Okay. If we're in AP stats, you'd have to write out that sentence on the AP test. You'd have to explain what that number meant, not just half powers, it's a quiz, it's a multiple choice question, you pick the one that says 0.82, okay, or 82%. All right, Mr. Hanlon distributed a five question multiple choice quiz. So this is the number of questions, this is gonna be our N, and that does not change anywhere in this. There are five choices for each question. That changes depending which question we're looking at here. But for to begin with, what's the probability we guess correctly? She guesses the answer. Our probability is going to start out as one out of five. Okay. Ashley's probability of getting exactly three right. Yay, we don't have to add up a bunch of junk, right? We're just do binome PDF. Five questions with a probability of one fifth or point two. Chance that she gets exactly three right is two is the next one? Oh. One, two? Okay, so just about 5%. Okay. 
What if the teacher says, oh, I'll make it a little easier on you. I'm going to say there's only four choices on this quiz. What's going to change? Okay, she still wants to get three right because three out of five would be a passing grade, right? But it's one out of four or 0.25. What'd she get? Okay, so about 8.7%. Yeah, it's still stinky percent, right? What about if it's just true, false? You just, okay, I'll make it even easier. What's the probability that you can guess three out of five if it's half? So 31% of the people could pass if it was a five question multiple choice quest just by guessing. That's why the ACT and the SAT aren't multiple or true false, guys. Okay, that's why they have four or five. Okay. All right, this is a really important part of the lesson. So if you've been sleeping, now it's time to wake up. You have to know how to do expected value. Okay, there's a question on the quiz and there's a question on the final. Expected value, here's my definition. The probability that you will, I'm going to say win, times the amount you would win, amount of winnings, plus the probability of losing times the amount you would lose. Okay, this actually, I wish this question was on your notes and it's not because the one on the, the Final and the one on the quiz are a raffle question, but there's one couple in your homework, so we can do those. But at a raffle, 500 tickets are sold for a dollar each. There are three prizes given, $100, $50, and $10. What is the expected value of your net gain if you buy a ticket? What that means is, if you played this raffle every day for 100 years, what would your average winnings be? Okay. This is what we're going to do. The probability that you win, well, one person, uh, just a second, really quick, make room to write on this slide. And I want you to just look at that. I want you to think about what we're doing here. There's one out of 500 chance that you win how much? $100. But do you really win $100? Because you bought a ticket, right? There's a one in 500 chance that you win what? Which would be 50 minus one or 49. Plus, there's a one in 500 chance that you win, which would be nine really, right? 500, thank you. Okay, then there's a 497 out of 500 chance that you win what? No, you lose. A dollar. Okay. Add all that up. This is 99 over 500. This is 49 over 500. This is 9 over 500. And this is negative 497 over 500. Point six eight negative. No, yes, maybe. Okay. Now, th can you actually lose exactly 68 cents? No. But if you averaged out your winnings and losses, if you played it a zillion times, you would average a loss of 68 cents. Okay? Theoretically, yes. Okay? It's called an expected value. This question you don't have, let's do the ones you have. A resort is planning a bicycle race. The cost of sponsoring the event is $8,000. The resort ex expects to, I'm going to rephrase this as bring in $15,000 on the event. That's not the profit, okay? There's a 30% chance of a hurricane arriving that day. 
Okay, so you're trying to con you 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 love bike races, okay? You're trying to convince your boss who owns the resort that he should go ahead and do this. So you say the probability of the hurricane is 30%. If there's a hurricane, it says the race will be canceled and not rescheduled. So he'll end up losing how much? Negative 8,000, right? It costs the race, the cost is $8,000. So he'll be $8,000 in the hole. But there's also the possibility that there's not a hurricane, which would be what possibility? 0.70. Now, he will bring in 15,000, but he will still have spent 8,000. Does it worthwhile or not? What's the expected outcome? Yeah, that's 7,000 times 0.7. So there is still an expected outcome. In other words, if he held this bike race for 100 years, every year he had it, he would still average out being ahead $2,500 per year, okay? Even though a couple years he might hit a hurricane year and lose money. All right, this is another place that they use this in the real world, guys. Insurance uses this idea all the time. So we are supposed to be the insurance company, okay? So as the insurance company, what is our expected annual profit? Okay, read the question. What are we making every year? They're paying us how much? $300 a year. If in the course of that year, the painting gets stolen, we end up having to pay out 20000 but they will have still given us the 300. So we would only end up losing $19,970 or $700 only. Okay, you understand what I'm saying, guys? The company got the 300, but they had to pay this out. Okay, but what's the chance that they have to pay it out because it got stolen? Very low. But what's the chance that they don't have to pay it out? Okay, so it's 0 0.998 times 300 plus 0 0.002 times 19, no, 19,700, right? What do you get? I thought it came out nice for some reason. Point nine nine eight times three hundred. Must have typed something wrong. Okay, so if you're the insurance company, are you okay with this? What? Okay, did I write something down wrong? Twenty thousand. 0.998 times 300. Oh, yeah, that would make a huge difference. That should be where you get the 260. Okay, sorry, my bad. Okay, now the question is, would, if you're the insurance company, would you be okay that this is a good premium? $300 seems enough, right, to be charging them because on average you're expected, okay. So even if you end up having to pay out at some one of the thousand customers you're doing, you're still going to come out ahead. All right. I'm going to do question number. If you need to leave, you need to leave. But I am going to do question number. Here. This question, uh, it's not 16. What is it numbered? I think it's 10. B maybe? Can you see if this question's on 10B, guys? Number four? Is it, say, raffle tickets? It's on 14? 14? Okay. 
It's on worksheet 14. Okay, 14A. Just We can do it again another day, but I want to practice one more time. 150 raffle tickets sold for $20 each. So you're going to lose $20. If there's four winning tickets, you're going to lose $20 how many times? Out of 150 tickets, there's four winners. So 146 out of 150 times, you're going to lose $20. Everybody okay with that? All right. Then one out of 150 times, you're going to make $300, but not really because you bought the $20 ticket, right? Another one out of 150, you bought the $20 ticket and made 150. Okay. But be careful, there's two $50 prizes, so that would be two out of 150 that you would make two out of 150, because there's 150 tickets still. Um, two out of 150 is the probability, and those people would each make $30, right? I'm out of room, but it'd be 50 minus 20. Why does this say, oh yeah, because they won $150, okay. So it's negative 20 times 146 over 150. And there's a hundred. This is people losing or making essentially 280. And these people are making 130. Okay, thank you so much. It, you might lose money. It definitely could be negative, which is a reason to not play this game. I got negative 1633. Okay. So if you played this, this raffle, a whole bunch of times, your average losings would still be $16. It's not a good raffle to play. Okay? The, okay. I'm going to stop the recording, though, just because it's going to get long.